The thing that scares me, my man, more than anything else is that, and I don't mean to sound conceited or or bigger headed than I than I need to be, and that is that it freaks me out that I've been right about all this stuff and the speed at which it's accelerating. If this doesn't wake people up, you know, and the problem is we don't have millions of people listening to us here on this channel like they do on the sea, you know, the, the, the Sunday evening news or 60 minutes or whatever, where they should really tell the world exactly what's happening. And we are being challenged in every way for supremacy. And it's being done in a methodical fashion. Instead of doing it, we gotta do it now, we gotta do it now. No, 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 no. This has been 17 years in the works. This week's deals from Miles Franklin are one ounce 2024 Eagles 550 over spot. We also have 90% constitutional silver dimes and quarters 275 over spot and 10th ounce gold Eagles $51 over melt. We have a massive inventory, all great prices. Text, email, or call slayer at milesfranklin.com. I'd be happy to help. And now let's get into the video. There's roughly 40 some million ounces on Comex that are for sale backing the contracts that are rehypothecated by a, you know, a factor of uh, 15, 16, 1700 um, and, percent. And yet India has bought and now with this, you know, almost 20 times that amount. So this is a country that understands what is happening. Um, they understand that the West is using the the uh, leverage of the Comex and the LBMA to control prices, and they're using it against us. Uh, you know, when the le when the Comex was designed all these years ago, in '74, right after the day after President Ford allowed gold to be made legal again, they needed to control the price, so they came up with the system, and the system was we'll create fake gold and fake money to buy it. What I mean by that is that. They rehypothecate. As I mentioned right now, silver is rehypothecated like 1,700%, and gold's a little bit less than that. But the point of it is, is that what they do is back then, especially, you first have to understand that no one really ever stood for delivery. 1% uh, of the contracts issued would stand for delivery. It was used to hedge exposure for producers and farmers and all sorts of things where you would, you know, hedge a wheat uh, when you plant a field in April and hedge its production. Uh, into September when it's harvested on the farmer or the baker can buy the buy the contract in, in September with a guaranteed price and the farmer can sell a contract in April for delivery in September for a guaranteed price and everyone wins. And anyways, uh, but in terms of gold and, and silver, it was, you know, they didn't want to let it get out of control. It was uh, after the London gold pool. So they didn't want to let it get out of control because it signals the weakness in the system. So the system that they would create would be like this. When I say fake gold and fake money, like if I um, if I have a hundred thousand dollars in my margin account right now, it costs about uh, about eight thousand dollars in my margin account in order to buy a hundred ounce gold contract. Now I don't have to spend that eight thousand dollars; it just has to sit in that margin account. And if the price doesn't go against me, it, I never pay for it. The trade itself, or unless I take delivery, the trade itself um is you know a few bucks just like any trade but the margin account is what allows me to control the silver and the gold so gold in this case so if if the colmex says look we can we can sell that one contract you know a hundred times to a hundred different people no one ever takes possession of it anyway they'll pay us for it we'll say okay you own it they're never going to take possession of it and all you got to do to pay for it is have money in your margin account so they don't even have to pay for it it will create all of this 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 volume in in contracts that allows us to control the price no one ever stood for delivery but that's changing now you see and and the suppression through rehypothecation or manipulation of the contracts is ending because you're having all of the countries say thank you. I appreciate that. See, because now India and China are not third world. They're industrialized, rich, and savvy. And they're saying, wonderful, thank you so much. I'll stand for delivery. And the LBMA has about the lowest amount of silver they've ever had, ever, on hand. The COMEX is watching 400 million plus ounces be bled out over the last two years. And, and the whole system is being bled dry using the suppression of the West. I want to read to you something to prove that they understand this. This is a, a something that I've said on your show a gazillion times over the last uh, 
year plus about how that they're going to issue a BRICS common currency at some point and that it will be pegged to a basket of currencies and a basket of commodities. We've said that. Uh, Sergey Glaziev has told us that for three years. I've said it on a thousand plus podcasts and, and it will happen. Didn't happen in August, might not happen in October. Maybe it will, the October meeting in Russia, but it will happen eventually. Um, you know, until then, what they've been doing, by the way, just to digress for a moment, they trade with their local currencies instead of using dollar to settle. You know, Russia, China just canceled huge, huge amount of thousands and tons of wheat from Australia and the United States. They're now buying it from uh, Russia and, and Brazil. And they're doing that um, in, in a way whereby they are paying for it, these countries, for the wheat. Uh, in um, they'll, they'll accept yuan for it. Um, and then instead of holding that yuan, normally it would have been dollars, which creates demand for the dollars, but instead they'll use the digital yuan and then they'll take that yuan and send, send it back to the Shanghai Gold Exchange where they can immediately convert that yuan into gold, which is what? The only other tier one reserve asset. And, and so, you know, then instead of what they would have normally done is settle in dollars and then take the proceeds and buy treasuries, Instead of doing that, they're buying gold and they're selling treasuries. So they're replacing treasuries, which can be sanctioned and confiscated. The idiot uh, brain dead Treasury Secretary Yellen in Brazil, of all places, a charter member of BRICS publicly says we need to confiscate Russian assets, not just seize them, but confiscate them to fund the Ukrainian war. What an idiot. Complete and total stupidity. So who the hell would want to buy our treasury bonds that have inflation risk, have been very volatile? In fact, more volatile last year than gold for the first time in 45 years. And as proven, if you don't align with them, they'll 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 take it from you and they'll confiscate it if we don't align ideologically. Uh, so much so that they've just developed the BRICS grain exchange where before I finish on what I was gonna say, the one thing they say about the BRICS grain exchange is that global prices are determined by the Chicago Commodity Exchange. Moscow and China seek to move away from trading grain for US dollars in favor of the national currencies of BRICS member states. Well, well, China just canceled these massive contracts last week with Australia and the US farmers buying it from Russia, buying it from uh, uh, corn and soybeans from Brazil instead of the US, paying in yuan instead of US dollars. And then uh, those countries, instead of stockpiling those currencies, which would have been dollars, they switch it into gold on the Shanghai exchange, take possession instead of buying treasuries. This is happening right out from underneath us. But to prove they know what's going on, I'm going to read to you something. So there is there was an article that came out. Another finance minister, a Kremlin aide named Yuri Yushakov, came out and he said, look, we are indeed developing a currency. And the idea of the currency is that there will be two baskets, one basket of national currencies of the countries involved, one currency of basket of, excuse me, one basket of commodities. And of course, they mentioned that it will be digital in the digital form, which means it can be used without the banking system, just like the Project M bridge that they developed, which we just saw the first ever cross border payment for gold using the digital you want. It sidesteps the SWIFT. They can go and not be, you know, have to go through the intermediary banks of the West. They can go right on Project M bridge, trade their digital currencies with another currency to buy the commodity and accept digital you on. So in any case, or any of these digital currencies. So in any case, here's what he says. So we know, we know, we've talked about a basket of currencies and a basket of commodities. That's nothing new. But how about this? And I've been saying this for three years, and it's coming and you can see they know it. Second part is price. For the moment, price is determined by Western speculation. For the moment, price is determined by Western speculation. We produce all of these commodities and we consume them. I mean, China produces more gold than anyone in the world, and, and they're the largest accumulators of it right next to India. And so, you know, we produce, we consume, yet we do not have the ability to, but we do not have our own price mechanism, which will balance supply and demand. Now, let me stop there for a minute. What did I tell you about the way the COMEX was designed? If it were done one-to-one, -one, supply demand would be balanced. But instead of doing it one-to-one, -one, they rehypothecate the shit out of it, over leverage it, create more and more and more and more contracts to control and suppress the price. 
right? right. It's not one to one. The rehypothecation right. right now in silver is like 1700%, not one to one. So we produce, we consume, but we do not have our own price mechanism, which will balance supply and demand. During the COVID panic, the price of oil fell to nearly zero. Now, as I've said on 12 podcasts this week, we know that's wrong. It went to negative $40 a barrel because all the tankers were loaded with oil during COVID. They couldn't get into the ports, so no one wanted it. How about we'll pay you 40 bucks a barrel? This is what happens when the futures control the price, the speculators, the gamblers, they they create distortions. So he says it fell to nearly zero. He's wrong there. It's, it was negative 40. But he goes on to say it's impossible to make any strategic planning for economic development if you do not control prices of basic commodities. Here's where it gets good. Price formation with this new currency should get rid of Western exchanges of commodities. Let me do that one more time. Price formation with this new currency should get rid of Western exchanges of commodities. So they understand what they're what we're doing. They understand that we are suppressing the price of gold and silver, but they're using it against us. And I've been saying that forever, like jujitsu, you use your opponent's leverage against them. They are using the suppression of the Western paper market to drain the COMEX, to drain the LBMA, to drain everything. And now after they've been very effective at that, now they're doing arbitrage where they're turning up the heat, where the price of gold and silver are priced much higher in Shanghai. Three bucks higher on silver, and it opened up 7% limit up on Monday. Didn't do that here. So they're pricing it higher there to attract the traders who have access to all three platforms, Shanghai, LBMA, and uh, COMEX, and to buy in the West and deliver to the East for a premium. That shit ain't ever coming back. Never. And they are slowly, methodically doing it the right way and i always say logarithmic decay that's going to be the next tattoo little by little then all at once well, that's <laughs> what they're doing little by little by little by little then boom all at once so when we talk about india importing all of this silver using the suppression of the brain dead west they know it and they know that at some point no one will be stupid enough to trust the western price and deliver deliver at those stupid prices. And that's when, boom, the COMEX and the LBMA bust. And that's when the new price is set on a cash and carry basis in Moscow, in Dubai, and in Shanghai, and other parts of the world that accumulate and produce and respect these commodities for what they should be. And it won't just be precious metals. It'll be commodities uh, or, or, or soft commodities, like corn, like wheat, like the, the new BRICS grain exchange. But how about the fact that they own the LME, the London Metals Exchange, which isn't precious metals, it's base metals, steel, copper, aluminum, zinc, nickel, all that stuff, right? So they own it. They own it. And now they want to start putting the warehousing of all of these metals traded in London on the LME in China. Do you see a problem here? Do you see what they're doing? They're going to buy up all the grain and all the wheat and all the corn and the soybeans. They're buying all the base metals, the copper, the aluminum, the steel, the zinc. They're buying all the precious metals. They're going into Africa. They're going into um, South America through the Belt Road Initiative, and they're striking deals. And those deals are mutually cooperative. We will come in to you, your country, which is unindustrialized and third world, and we will help you pull your, your natural resources out of the ground. We will build railways and roads and maritime channels to help you deliver it. We will industrialize your country. We will enrich it, your country, and we want to cut. That's, that's how business is done, mutually respectful, mutually beneficial. We go in with a gun to someone's head and coercion and make them do things that they don't want to do when China and this new growing uh, union of countries is doing it a different way. They are doing it in a mutually cooperative way. And, and, and you know, I mentioned to you that we saw that first in 2023, late 2023, like in November, December, the first ever cross-border settlement for gold using the digital yuan. yuan. And remember, we've talked about the Belt Road Initiative for a very long time, right? What is it? It's 150 plus countries. Right now, 75% uh, of, of human population, 50 plus percent of global GDP and growing. And a lot of these countries are unindustrialized. So check this out. Chinese government just launched a new public blockchain infrastructure um, platform led by the Conflux Network. The new platform, dubbed Ultra Large Scale Blockchain Infrastructure Platform for the Belt Road Initiative, aims to create pub a public blockchain infrastructure platform. This platform will be able to support the implementation of cross-border cooperation 
projects along the Belt Road Initiative. So you have 75% of human population right there. And all of the deals I have mentioned for years have, are being settled on the digital yuan, most of them, the contracts that are building out this infrastructure. Now they have the ability, once they've industrialized and pulled all the shit out of the ground and built the roads and the bridges and the railroads and the maritime channels to pay for it all, going back and forth, sidestepping the swift on a digital system like Project Embridge, which cuts the West out completely and totally. And all of the bro the, the, the pathways are connecting to the BRICS pathways, like the North-South Corridor that goes from like Iran to to uh, to Russia or to India, past Russia, and out with, instead of going through, you know, the Indian Ocean where where you got the U.S. Navy, all of these things are being done, isolating the West. And if you see the little by little, the chessboard, little by little by little by little, look at all the pieces, infrastructure. Look at the ten countries that have already signed on to BRICS, and one of the countries that is formally applied, I believe, is Sudan. And if you look at next to Egypt and Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates and uh, Iran, they have the entire Red Sea and and um, Straits of Hormuz now covered. The entire thing. They have shipping lanes. They have relationships done mutually beneficially all over the world with the majority of human population. You have the president of Belarus calling for a summit to join the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. See that word cooperation and the Eurasian Economic Union into the BRICS. I've been saying that for three years. The SCO, which both Iran and Saudi Arabia have applied to Iran as a full member. Saudi Arabia will be this year. They are a observant member last year is the largest regional military and financial organization in the world. You put all these groups together with the Belt Road, you're talking the majority of human population, the majority of all the rare earth metals, the majority of all of the soft and hard commodities, and the majority of all the precious metals, not to mention oil and natural gas. It's it's a situation that is growing rapidly. And the, and the fact that our media doesn't just do a horseshit job of it, they do no job of telling any of us what's happening. And this infrastructure is becoming very impressive. And everyone says, the, the naysayers, very smart people, will say, well, the bond market, this and the bond, they don't have a bond market. Who's going to trust them? Who trusts us anymore? And our bonds, which have been horrible, no one wants anymore. So instead, they sell bonds and they buy gold, which has no counterparty liability, which has outperformed the bond market, which has a 5,000-year history of being wealth. And, a, and, and, and the debt of a country in the form of a bond has about that big of a historical precedent of being money or wealth. So this is all happening right out from underneath us. And the thing that scares me, my man, more than anything else is that, and I don't mean to sound conceited or or bigger headed than I than I need to be. And that is that it freaks me out that I've been right about all this stuff and the speed at which it's accelerating. If this doesn't wake people up, you know, and the problem is we don't have millions of people listening to us here on this channel like they do on the C, you know, the, the, the Sunday evening news or 60 minutes or whatever, where they should really tell the world exactly what's happening. And we are being challenged in every way for supremacy, and it's being done in a methodical fashion. Instead of doing it, we gotta do it now, we gotta do it. Now. No, 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 no. This has been 17 years in the works.